here on this side. Um, um, I, I believe in giving back to my community basically and uh, when I started working on this project uh, a year and a half ago, which was my first one, uh, I wanted to make sure more members of my community has a affordable place for living, which um, we're to call us home. And I wanted to make sure people of my community have a place to work, even though it's for short term, so the project is finished. And uh, that's the reason I chose the experts who have been in this business for 30 plus years, which has helped me to achieve my goal. I'm a foreigner, so Sun Prairie has given me home. And I wanted to make sure I give it back to the same, 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 same community that gave me uh, my home. Uh, my kids, who's going to be going um, to be my uh, family's first generation, who's going to be born in the US. I would like them to call Sun Prairie home. So um, now thinking about how much help we can do together um, to help families to get in the, into the affordable houses. That's uh, how I get back to my community. All right, thank you. And then uh, also wishing to speak in support of this project is uh, Randy Bruce. Randy, would you please come up, introduce yourself, and uh, give us your affiliation with this project. again to revisit this project. We had, uh, my name is Jim Stapp with Madison Property Management. Mike has helped us, asked us to, and Mayor Esser was able to pronounce Mike's name properly, and I only wish I could figure out how to do it. I've tried it, but my tongue is just tied in that um, language apparently, so I apologize for that. And he's allowed me to call him Mike. Um, Mike approached us with this lot when he was looking at the building that he wanted to be a contributor to this county, to this city. Um, 
Um, and so at that particular time, we envisioned that we would have the opportunity to make this a 22 unit project. Um, it was originally set up as a um, 12 unit project. It was originally set up to have um, two bedrooms that were 1,850 square feet. And this goes back um, 10 years ago. And I think uh, the housing demands and what they were looking for and the price that both people were willing to pay um, the cost of construction was a whole different world 10 years ago. Um, this project was really part of one of the northernmost units or lots in this little um, triangle or square, however you want to refer to it. And the lot was owned by the same person that owned the building that was repossessed by Park Bank back in um, about um, 2005. And so um, the lot had never been built on. As I looked at the, the lot, and you read the, the directions or the, the summary, really the, the right side where the driveway easement was um, would have belonged to this lot, but the building on the right, which was dry condos now, did not have enough side setback to be able to allow for the construction of that parcel or that building. So it was designed by and approved by the city to where that um, easement, parking easement 20 feet by 100 feet would, um, be deeded to the adjacent parcel on the right side or on the east side, but automatically and at the same time, a driveway easement would be given to this parcel. So this parcel, this one I want to look at is really was planned to have the use of that driveway easement. So if you look at the square footage, in my mind it needs to be included, there. it should be psychologically included relative to the square footage where you're looking at density, et cetera. When you look at density, that um, is it, bigger or more dense than it should be. If we look at the entire county and look at the change and how we looked at density and the use of, of um, our precious resource land over the last 10 years, I think density has been looked at totally different. Um, Sun Prairie has grown probably more rapidly than the other city in, in Dane County over the last 10 years um, to their um, credit. Uh, if we look at what's happening to the entire Dane County, it's, it's growing so rapidly if I go down East Washington and look at the density that's been put in there. And the city of Madison does not have the luxury of land that you have. Um, I'm working on a project downtown and bought for one that we had built a few years ago that was 11 stories and it was looked at as too dense. But the, the elders had the, the view to say we have to use our precious resources wisely and waste land on two story buildings or, or low density just does not make any sense, especially when you're looking at the rapid, rapid consumption of agricultural land. Um, we had put this together originally at 22 units. We had sat with staff with Sarah and Scott and, and Mayor Esser. And at that time, Mayor Esser did a wonderful job of pronouncing Mike's name. Um, and they asked us to scale it back to 20 units. They thought that would fit better. We did that, and we realized the resounding defeat we received, which we um, were shocked at, and I hope we can recover. And Mike has been willing to say, yes, I will reduce it significantly from where it was. We have higher than, than the required um, parking spaces um, put into the project. Um, I managed another four unit project there. The person that um, owns the other, the northernmost um, 12 unit here, I might talk to him as well. He has not had any parking issue problems. He's not had any rental problems. In the 12 <coughs> and the four unit that I managed, we've had it consistently um, occupied. Rents have, um, have been Fair, equitable, but always increased, and parking has never been a problem. I understand other people have a different philosophy, but I'm hoping with the, what we have reduced this to, we can create a win-win situation for the city of Sun Prairie, for that neighborhood. That neighborhood has a tremendous walkability with all of the um, other uh, facilities that are adjacent to it. Not everybody is going to have a car, um, and I would urge you to take the opportunity to give this young man the opportunity to contribute back to the city <coughs> and to make this a viable lot rather than a vacant lot that has come to um, be assumed that's what it's going to be forever, but that doesn't help the city of some various tax revenue at all. Um, again, I manage property in the neighborhood, not had any problems from our tenants. We manage a lot of property in, this, in um, all of the county, and would appreciate any, answering any questions that you would have. John? <clears throat> so does that mean you're saying that um, a 12 unit would not cash flow enough to make this a viable project? In today's cost, cost of building, um, 
it's going to make it very difficult. You have almost the same, uh, unless I make builder or bigger units um, on that same parcel. To, to, but then the demand for bigger units isn't there. Um, there are, I don't know of a single builder unless he um, is single family housing um, that is building 1,850 square foot two bedroom units. So yes, I don't think I can make this cash flow. You get me down to 12 units that I have to put that big in. To put the foundation in the footing in to do all of the water retention that we need to do, etc. Um, there's some basic costs, the, the fixed costs before you even start are, are very high, and we need to spread them over more units. I just, you know, I just I I have a problem with more density out there. I mean, I'm very familiar with the area and stuff, and I'm sure you can bring in numbers that say parking hasn't been a problem like that. I can find a I don't want to go down the road where we're putting something that could be a problem and um, the fact that the, you know, the thing was all set up as a 12 unit or whatever. I guess we've been down that road a little bit, so. I, I, I respect your position. I can only ask you to look at the, the use of land and, and our precious resource that we have in Dean County and it's getting smaller and smaller every day and our farmland outside of the city of Sun Prairie, you have a luxury in Sun Prairie that we don't have in Madison. Um, and I, I look at it as, unfortunately, sad that we're using it less wisely than I would like to be. But I, I respect your position as well. I apologize for my phone, but I should have turned off. Any other questions that you might have? Thank you, Jim. Thank you for the opportunity, and I sincerely appreciate your giving us time again. Now speaking in opposition is Tom Donahue. Tom, would you come up here and introduce yourself and give us your address? Tom Donahue, I live at 2998 Triumph Drive. I'm in the building adjacent, uh, directly to the east. And I'm in opposition to the plan as proposed. I couldn't make the last meeting, but I did submit my comments via email, and I hope everybody read those. Uh, I still have all those concerns, but the biggest concern is the driveway placement. It's going to be roughly six feet from our building, and I believe that's going to negatively impact the quality of life of those people on the end of the building. Um, I don't think Triumph Drive needs more driveways. It's already a busy street. The developer said that they moved the building further west. I would rather have them move it further east and put the driveway off of Providence on the other side. And I submitted a couple different uh, options to Scott, and he mentioned one looked workable, the other one looked interesting. Um, so I'm not sure uh, one of those was dismissed by the developer. But I do believe that they're still workable. And that's my main point is I'm not, I'm not thrilled with the project. Uh, I'm not totally opposed, but I really would like to drive away on the other side. And I think it's workable. Okay. Thank you, Tom. And then we have also wishing to speak in opposition, Jill Archer. Jill, would you come up and introduce yourself? Give us your address. Accidents 
and so I, I have concerns about parking. Um, with all due respect to the developer and to the owner and the, the people who have spoken in support, when you bought the property, you knew it was going to be zoned for a 12-unit building, so I'm a little frustrated that we're even sort of having this discussion. I think the more we take away from the plan that's already in place, the more hodgepodgey the community is going to look. I moved to Madison area from the Milwaukee area. I live in Greendale, which is a planned community, one of the three Greendale communities that were developed during the Great Depression. And I lived there. It was a great community. It had walkability. That was the big thing. Livability and walkability. Houses were planned. Neighborhoods were planned. And it was cute and it was quaint. And people really want to live there for that reason. That's the reason I picked Sun Prairie when I moved here. I could have moved to Fitchburg. I could have moved to Windsor. I could have moved to the forest. I wanted to live in the neighborhood. Not a subdivision. And I think if we keep itching away at these plans that are in place, what we're going to end up with is a subdivision. Um, you know, I like the uniformity of four 12 unit buildings that look alike. I like the fact that you don't look down the street and see cookie cutter houses. I like what I have. That's why I bought here. And that's why I'm hoping that you guys will, you know, keep the integrity of that plan already in place. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, Anita Groom also wishes to speak in opposition. Anita, would you introduce yourself and give us your address, please? Anita Groom, I live at 302 Stanley Providence Street, which is the unit that's right down in the back of this one. I have lived there 10 and a half years, and it's been a parking problem all this time. I'd like to speak to that. I remember receiving a flyer from a candidate for city council, and on the back side of this flyer, there was a, a three-paragraph letter from a judge, and I apologize, I don't remember the judge's name, because at the time it didn't make any difference to me what was on there, but I do remember the essence of the letter, and the judge is saying that he doesn't understand how that there's a plan in place and how the developer staff can come in and put in more units, and he's sitting there having to deal with the parking tickets, and then he has to say okay for the parking ticket because there's no other option for it. And so I am here in that regard that we are now taking the time of somebody to give the parking ticket, of the judge taking time, and then of the person taking time to have to go and do this. So we already have a problem, it's already been documented, and now we're looking at adding more units that keep in the same bedrooms, we know there's going to be more people in there, and we do not have enough parking, and it's only become worse, and I do not like the way that this is looking, so I am here in um, opposition to it. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. And next, also wishing to speak in opposition to Scott Gregory. Scott, would you come up and introduce yourself? Give us your address. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Scott Gregory. I live at 3027 Providence Street, just to the north of the proposed building. I spoke last night in opposition of it, and I wouldn't speak if this was a 12 unit building. I bought my condo in March of this year. I did my research, and I knew that this area was planned for a 12 uh, unit building, and that was acceptable to me. But we're back again, going from 20 to 16, which is still a 33% increase in density over the plan 12. A plan was made in 2003. Uh, the owner bought this property, it sounds like a year and a half ago, knowing that this was a planned 12 unit lot. All he wants to do right now is just make more money to be able to not do any good to the neighborhood by bringing in 16 units as opposed to 12. It's not going to benefit this neighborhood. And that's what my concern is. It's going to bring down the neighborhood and not benefit the neighborhood. The uh, dwelling units per acre is 20.19 for, for the for your staff, which is high for that area as is. It's more than all of the other units. So I stand in opposition to this again. I don't want to regurgitate all of the parking because I think you guys have heard enough about the parking issue that we have there. But this was a planned 12 unit parcel, and that's what I would respectfully ask the commission to continue to stay to as a 12 unit. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And then finally, wishing to speak in opposition is David Smith. David, would you please come up and introduce yourself? Give us your address. 
Hi, my name is David Smith. I own the four units across the street from the spot on Conrad Street. Um, my issue still is the parking. Uh, Sunday morning I was out there because of the issue with my snowfall person. There was absolutely not a spot on the other side of the street where this spot is for the whole block to park. I was out there yesterday and today. There's still cars there which are now parked legally. Only about half that side of the street has been plowed or cleared. There's kids running all over the place. Um, so parking is an issue. It's going to be an issue. Even if you just put the original 12 unit in, there's going to be an issue. If you add another four units, it's just going to increase the problem again. In the summertime, there's both sides of the triumph and then around the problem are full of cars every day. You go down one block towards where T. Wall built that building, both sides of Triumph are full of cars all summer long. <coughs> There's no place to put your garbage bins because once it snows, the aprons are full, they can't put them on the grass. The city doesn't want them on the street. You can't put them in the driveways because you can't get in and out of the driveway. Um, I do have a couple just other comments. One, the owner, the developer, Nobody made any attempt to contact any of the owners that I know. Nobody contacted me, even when I provided my name last time to them. So if they were doing something to discuss it, let me know what's going on. So I had a little better idea. I do have some concerns, too, about what Mr. Schaub said. There is a parking problem down where he, his, he manages it for you. Because there's a seven-unit condo building right next to his, and the street is just full of cars that hold seven units. Okay, that little corner where he is, there's a big parking area. There's extra car space back there. And I do believe that you could reasonably put a 12 unit in there at today's cost and make it cost effective for the owner. That will produce revenue. And I say this because I've been looking at properties to build. I just haven't found a lot yet. I talk to my builder once or twice a month. I know what he tells me if he can put something like that up for. So I believe it can be done. So you can put an effective building in, a cost-effective building in there that works for the tenants and works for the owner. Thank you. Thank you, David. That's all the comment cards I had. Is there anybody in the audience still wishing to address this body? If not, you want to have another say, Randy? You don't mind. Very much. This, there's been quite a bit of discussion about density, and there are many ways to measure density. But one that uh, seems to be in everyone's mind uh, this evening is, is uh, units per acre, um, and that is certainly one way to, to measure it, and, and it's a common way. But we could also look at it as bedrooms per acre, bedrooms per site. We could also look at it as square footage per site. And uh, it's my, my uh, belief that we really are not increasing density. We are increasing the unit count, that is true, because we're massaging the, the unit plans within that building envelope. But the building itself is not getting any larger, and the bedroom count is not getting any larger. And we don't believe we're adding more people to the, to the building or to the site than what was originally approved. Um, and, and we think that we can do uh, make this revision in terms of the unit mix uh, to provide what we think would be a, a, a better mix actually for that uh, full lot there, that full area there, um, and, uh, and, and we can do so and maintain uh, and exceed the parking requirements that the city has. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So now it is 735.